We're now moving on to the second major clause that is handled in our logical query processing, and that's the where clause. So from the from, we move on to the where. Now, that's an optional element that you use to filter data based on a predicate. A predicate is basically a logical expression. So in this particular example, uh, you want to filter only orders that were placed by the customer with customer ID 71. Now, a number of important things to remember about the WHERE clause is that in SQL, we have kind of specialized uh, treatment of predicates uh, when instead of having an actual value stored in a column in a row, we use a marker called a NULL. And soon we'll have a discussion about uh, what NULLs are, but generally for now, it's enough to just think of it as a marker for a missing value. So every time you compare something with a NULL, imagine there was a row where the customer ID was unknown, and we checked in that row whether a NULL is equal to 71. Uh, we cannot say that the result is true, and we cannot say that the result is false. Like normally, what SQL uses is this logical value called unknown. If the customer ID value is present in a given row, we will always get a result that is either true or false. Right? So in a row where the customer ID is indeed equal to 71, we will get a true, and the row will be returned from the filter. In a row where the customer ID is present, but not 71, we will get a false back from the predicate. But in a row uh, where the customer ID is null, if we decided to support this option, then null equals 75. 71 in this case is unknown. And also the unknown case ends up getting filtered out like a false for filtering purposes. So the only rows that you will get back from the filter are the ones for which the predicate evaluated to true. Right? So let's go ahead and apply this in our case. So Notice how we're querying only orders where the customer ID is equal to 71. And out of 830 rows that we have in the table, observe that we got 31 rows back. Right? So apparently, customer 71 placed 31 orders. Now, a number of import important things to remember about uh, the filter. Um, uh, one, remember always to think in terms of three-valued logic. Always ask yourself, are nulls possible in the data? And then if they are, uh, whether your uh, currently written code behaves the way that you need it to behave. In some cases, like we will see later, you will need to add a bit of more extra logic uh, to handle uh, the special kind of behavior of nulls. In addition, in this course, we don't really get uh, deeply into performance aspects, but this is such a fundamental element that you want to make sure that you understand it. Whenever you uh, write a filter predicate, uh, it could either be what's known as a search argument or not a search argument. A search argument is a predicate in such a form that can efficiently utilize indexes if present on the data. So for instance, if we created an index on the customer ID column, the index organizes the customer ID values sorted and has a navigation structure that helps us get very quickly to a particular point that could be the beginning of a range that we're after. So in this particular example, if we have an index on the customer ID column, instead of scanning the entire table, SQL Server could go through the index and then filter only the relevant uh, rows doing much less uh, physical effort. Now, one of the requirements for a filter predicate to be considered a search argument and this way enable an efficient use of the index is that we do not apply any manipulation on the filtered column. So for instance, if we had any kind of uh, um, maybe function applied to the uh, filtered column, this would break the searchability of the filter. So if, for instance, I wrote here the left uh, section of the customer ID with a character one if it was a string column or in our case, where it's an integer column, if I went ahead and did some sort of manipulation, like adding something to the value, or any form of manipulation, you can think of any function that you like that we apply to the column. Never mind uh, if the outcome of the manipulation preserves the original ordering behavior of the original values or not, SQL Server looks at it and says, 
you applied manipulation and not considering the filter a search argument and then will not be able to utilize the index efficiently. So just keep in mind this basic rule, as much as you can, you want to try and avoid this sort of manipulation, okay? Sometimes it's unavoidable, but certainly sometimes with some small revisions to the way you write the code, you can leave the column unmanipulated, right? So that's pretty much what we have in a query filter. Another thing that you want to remember, by the way, is that generally uh, you want to try and avoid doing the filtering in the application itself and do any filtering that you can in the server, basically, by applying a where clause. This can, of course, reduce a lot of the network traffic. So some applications actually pull everything from the data and bring it to the client environment and then apply the filtering there. And of course, this adds a lot of unnecessary network traffic. So filtering naturally will also help you reduce a lot of this unnecessary network traffic.